Hey guys, welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to Restoring Early to Base Black and White Televisions. This episode is going to be all about the vertical sync circuit. Both the theory and trying to re uh, repair the darn thing so this set gets a stable image. Now, as near as we could tell from the service info, this originally had a ceramic hybrid vertical integrator module that had been clipped out and replaced with this mess. So I went ahead and using the values on the schematic built this. Some of these values weren't quite right. Or they didn't match the schematic. These do. Uh, ideally I would have used mica or NP0 or C0G ceramic. Those are all very very temperature stable. Plastic film is pretty darn temperature stable too but not quite as good as the others. Why is stability important in this circuit? Well, you don't want to ha you have to get up off your chair and adjust the vertical hold after this set's been running for a while and starts heating up. This, I think, will work just fine. We shall find out soon enough. All right, this set is powered up. What I'm hoping is if we can get something resembling a stable image that should tell us more about our vertical issue in terms of how well it's deflecting. Hey, all right, that's sort of kind of something. Uh, so if we can get this more stable, we can see real, how bad is our height issue really and to see how bad the linearity might be. I think it might actually be locking vertically, so this is the vertical hold fully counterclockwise. It's a jumbled mess, right? Remember how the camera, the set on its side, so vertical is going this way. As I go clockwise, it seems vertically to... See that, that blank right there? That is the vertical blanking interval. That's the sync pulse. That would normally be, it'd be locking onto that, and that would be off the bottom of the screen. So the fact that it's not moving means we are locking. We're off, the phase is off a little bit, but it is locking. If I move it a little bit, now it's starting to flicker the other way. Now it's, going, now it's kind of rolling up, and now it's kind of rolling down. Now what would make this really nice is if the horizontal would lock. So let's try adjusting the horizontal hold. Okay, that's, that's a whole lot. The horizontal is a little bit more interesting, or different when you adjust it. You get these diagonal lines. And when you get a stable point like this, it's when you're at a sort of a multiple of uh, the horizontal oscillator frequency. So you can, get, you can get points of stability, but it's not right. And now we have our stripes going this way. And if I go... Uh, the stripes are going this way, but we never get squares, do we? Well, there's a magic coil on the back of the set that I briefly mentioned in an earlier installment when we were looking at the, the Grob book. I'll uh, show it to you briefly, then I'm going to try adjusting it. Now, we're getting a little bit ahead of the game. We haven't talked about the horizontal circuitry yet, but... I'll tell you this, this, this coil is crit critical to the horizontal working. There's a slug in it that you adjust to set the horizontal free running frequency. That was what I'm going to try adjusting right now. There are a lot of caps in this area and if they've drifted off well, and I'm sure I'm sure they have drifted a bit in value. Same with the resistors. They may have drifted so much that I can't get the correct horizontal frequency anymore. What I'm hoping is that by adjusting that coil, I can compensate for the component drift and we can get it to lock. It's a really really common issue on sets. You know, I see as people post this all the time, they kind of get a, they get a set to working about this point. They say, I just can't get a horizontal lock. Invariably, by them adjusting this coil, 
or the equivalent on their model, they get a lock. All right, so it has a threaded shaft down the middle with a notch in it. I'm using this tool, it's a plastic tube with a metal blade. One end it sticks out, the other end it's recessed. I'm using the recessed end on the end of that threaded shaft. We use the same tools, same types of coils when we do an alignment on the video and sound. So I'm going clockwise and it's getting worse and worse, but notice occasionally it kind of locks. If I keep going it's a mess. Kind of, kind of lock, but our our lines are getting <laughs> more and more and more jumbled. So I'm going the wrong way. Let's go the other way. Often it'll get worse before it gets better. Keep going. What what will happen if it's going to lock? Is it'll just magically snap into place when we hit the sweet spot. That was close. We'll keep going. Oh, that looks it's looking really close too, but it's still kind of crazy. Let's keep going. <laughs> That's what I wanted to see. Oh, things will be so much easier from here on out because we. This is this <laughs> another interesting effect of picture tubes. This is like this is like our built-in oscilloscope now for the set. So this this is really cool that with barely any work we've gotten this far. So I can tell you a few things. The vertical sync is off. We shouldn't have this blank spot should be off screen. This is not. It, it definitely is not go, deflecting down as far as it should be. And the linearity is off, but it's not horrible. What I mean by linearity? Well, vertical linearity. The width of these squares should be the same from one side to the other. They're wider here than they are here. Same with the other, the horizontal deflection. The squares are taller down here and they're smaller up here. This area actually looks pretty good. All the squares should be, they should be all be squares, not rectangles. All right, guys, we gotta do it at some point. Let's see if we can get through this. I'm going to talk about synchronization, and I'm going to simplify it. I hope I don't get it wrong. I'm going to ignore color info, closed caption info, front porch, back porch, black level, white level, all this complicated stuff, and just talk about the absolute fundamentals of synchronization pulses. All right, we have two oscillators in the set that are just running on their own, doing their own thing with no signal applied. We have a vertical running at 60 hertz, and we have a horizontal running at 15.75 kilohertz. Yes, I know that this has changed over time, which isn't quite right. In a, let's just stick with the basics as it was originally set out, or at least it was, it was set out in the in the 40s. All right, so that's why we get an Im we get a, a, a white rectangle on the screen with no incoming signal. That's by design because you don't want to burn the phosphor. You want the set to do something. Well, when we do want to receive a signal, we these oscillators are just are what they call free running, meaning they have a resistor capacitor or a blocking transformer, some some kind of time constant in a feedback loop that's letting them run. Well, the incoming signal is synchronized to clock master clocks back at the TV station, right, by where it's transmitted from. That's not going to be in sync with ours. The frequency may be off a little bit. For sure, the phase is not going to be locked. So if we didn't have any synchronization, your image would be all distorted. Assuming that the frequencies were exactly the same, the picture would be rolling up or down, it'd be twisted left to right. Pretty easy to see when you, when you have a set where the synchronization circuits fail, is that's the kind of thing you see. The video is there, but it's, it's a mess. That's how early TV, some of the early TV scrambling systems were in a decoder box. They messed with the sync signal so your TV could not lock to it properly. All right, so what are sync pulses? Well, 
they include some special pulses in the transmitted signal so that your oscillators can lock both frequency and phase to the transmitted signal so everything is in step. Well, the simplest way to think about that is the horizontal sync pulses it's just like that. It's literally a pulse. So it says this is our incoming video signal. We have our AM modulated video one scan line so the more positive it is, the brighter it is, the more the lower the signal, the darker it is. And when we get to the end of the line, there's a pulse. Just don't worry about polarity and this and that. It depends on the standards and the country and all that. Just, we have some video info that controls the intensity of the electron beam until we get to the end of the line and there's a pulse. And that's supposed to kick off, send that electron beam, which is scanning along and then snap it back to the other side of the screen and then scan the next line. Now it also is going down. It's not quite like you might think where it's horizontal, we get a sync pulse and then it just drops down and does the next scan line. It's not quite like that. So while the horizontal oscillator is doing its thing, so is the vertical and it is driving the signal from the top to the bottom in a similar manner and when it gets to the bottom vertical sync pulse kicks it back up to the top but what's actually happening is because the, the horizontal is essentially you can think of it as a sawtooth wave and it's pushing the beam from left to right until it gets to the end and we snap back to the left and we go left to right then we snap back and these would correspond to our sync pulses coming in on the video. Well, while that's happening, so is the vertical, but the vertical, vertical is a much lower frequency. So while, I'll, I'll draw it here a little more compressed, so we think about a horizontal, it's really a short sawtooth, while the vertical is going along much slower until eventually it gets to the end and snaps down. And then it goes from the bottom up to the top. And I'm sure you've seen sets where the vertical sync is lost. It takes a bit of time to go from the bottom to the top. This is vertical blanking interval. That's that black bar you'll see kind of moving up or moving down if you lose sync. Horizontal is a much higher frequency, so when you lose horizontal sync, you don't see a, a vertical black bar moving left, left to right. What you typically see is some weird diagonal tearing that's why. Okay, so in our incoming composite video signal, we've got some video, horizontal sync, video, horizontal sync, video, horizontal sync. How do we get a vertical sync? How do we distinguish a vertical from a horizontal sync? Oh, well, uh, sorry, I glossed over this. I want to say that while the horizontal is going, doing its thing, pushing the beam left to right, the vertical is moving it from top to bottom. It's not doing it in jumps. It's not a staircase where if the vertical in a more modern system where you, the horizontal lines might be perfectly level, then you get to the end and it, it drops down one line, scans, drops down one line. It's not a staircase. It's, a, it's continuous. So the scan lines on your TV are actually slightly angled down. It's more like this. But it's so small, and you can rotate your CRT a little bit, that you are completely unaware of that. But that's actually what's happening, is the lines are not scanning straight across. They're going slightly down with each line. Until we get to the bottom, and it snaps back to the top. Okay, so we, we can't go along and just have one big pulse for the vertical, because this would screw up the horizontal oscillator. To keep the horizontal oscillator in sync, you have to have continuous pulses in lockstep with that scan line. So even when you're in that vertical blinking interval and it's getting off the bottom and going back to the top, you still have to have horizontal sync pulses in there. If you didn't, during this interval, the vertical retrace interval, the horizontal oscillator would get out of phase off frequency and it would wander around and your first few scan lines or more 
would be off and you'd have tearing and twisting and weirdness at the top of the picture which I suspect some of you have seen if you work on a set that has some problems that's why maybe the first half inch inch of this of your screen it's twisted it's weird it's because it's losing lock during that interval so what do they do well you can see it in this grab book here a bit these are our horizontal pulses during the vertical pulse they change a little bit the frequency is the same but the pulse width changes sort of having these short spikes the horizontal sync pulses are wider okay what does that do for us well this a special circuit called the vertical integrator which in its most basic form is a low pass filter it's just a resistor and a cap now if you choose your time constants right when you get these little short pulses the output of your vertical integrator let's pretend this is going into this you'll, you'll get nothing out of it but if our pulses are wider you will actually see a flat line you'll get kind of a pulse it'll be a little choppy be something like that meaning it's it's a low pass filter when you have really short spikes there's a resistor and a capacitor and with a really short spike it's not enough time for the capacitor to charge up it'll just barely charge up so you just get maybe just a little something like this but with a pulse much wider that cap has time to charge up and you can get something well let me draw a few pulses you get something more like that where during this larger pulse interval the cap does have time to charge up it'll discharge a little bit between but not enough to go away until we get to the end of the sink vertical sink and we go back to our short spikes and it drops off again so all it is is a low pass filter but to get more control over waveforms rather to get a better pulse shape out of it it's typically not just a resistor and a capacitor it typically is like this or here's our signal coming in and we have multiple You should call that a three pole low pass filter something like that then we get it's not you know you don't quite get a perfect square wave out of this but the more finely you control these rt time constants the better sync pulse you get out of it one key circuit that helps all this work is a sync limiter think of it as a comparator We're on one input we have our video with pulses coming in and on the other we can set a voltage reference let's say 0 0.5 volts and say this is a 1 volt composite video signal the purpose of this circuit is to lose the video info lose the noise and amplify just the sync pulses so all you get out of this are sync pulses so out of this stuff coming in there may be some noise superimposed out of this we would just get something like that the better you design this the more stable so you can get a stable image that's fuzzy and noisy but the sync can be rock solid if you have a good sync limiter, sync separator, it's sometimes called. Now the output of this goes into our vertical integrator, which we can just simplify as our low pass filter. 
and in a perfect world we would get a nice pulse out but it's more likely going to look something like that. And had a little more vertical oscillator which makes our nice sawtooth that's in sync with the pulse coming in. But curiously for the horizontal you use the opposite because you don't want to get this wider pulse width messing that up so you use a low pass filter on that and you have a cap and resistor going to ground feed the same output of this into this and this instead of giving you the kind of this tris Christmas tree thing will give you kind of crazy looking sharp spikes like that and that can go into your horizontal discriminator oscillator I'll uh, pull up the, the grob he has a great diagram in his book on how this goes and for one he shows some nice images of what happens when you lose sync now he shows losing horizontal sync giving you a nice vertical line realistically that that doesn't happen it's more likely you get tearing and he shows a lot of examples of different ways to do it somewheres in here here we go composite video in sync separator all we get out are the pulses the narrow pulses for the horizontal and during the vertical interval we get wider with just sh sh very short negative pulses top side goes to our integrator where we get that Christmas tree looking shape coming out vertical deflection oscillator it's our nice low frequency sawtooth coming out and we have a differentiator or high pass filter going to the horizontal where we get this kind of spike coming out and that goes to our horizontal sync AFC circuit and that has a much higher frequency sawtooth coming out of that okay let us make this happen in this TV uh, people are always asking me where are you hooking up your stuff well the input of the vertical integrator is pin 1 this little diagram here so we're going to put it on that point and the output is the grid of the success on 7 or pin 3 of that ceramic package and pin 2 pin two of the ceramic package is ground so it has 1, 2, 3 1 is the input, 2 is ground, 3 is the output look at input, look at output scope ground goes to the chassis Okay, there's the input to our vertical integrator. Well, what the heck are we looking at? Well, it's a little confusing, partly because I'm fitting a crosshatch pattern into it. I believe these are the horizontal sync pulses, and this is the crosshatch video info. Let's switch to a different pattern, raster, which is just a white, a fully white screen. All right, now I think it's a bit easier. These are the horizontal sync pulses. I've inverted the signal normally the pulses I believe would be negative at this point in the circuit but I flipped it around so they're positive to match the diagram we had sketched out. This weird thing superimposed on the back if I go off go lower frequency that I believe is our vertical sync pulse kind of floating around back there. It's very hard to sync onto a video signal unless your scope has special modes for it because there's so many signals mixed in there. We have our horizontal sync, vertical sync, color burst, video info but that should be a horizontal sync pulse. All right. The output of the integrator, those should disappear and be replaced by that Christmas tree sort of. We should see a blob or a little like <laughs> thing like this. All right. So let's look at the output and see what we have. All right. There's our output. All right. All those pulses disappeared. Now this is also a passive circuit, no active element, and a passive filter will lower the output level, even for the frequencies they get through, so increase my scope sensitivity. And that is our vertical sync blob. So, it's doing its job. The little remnant down here will be the horizontal sync pulses, and that's a vertical sync pulse again. It's a little hard to lock on to, so... Let's we'll deal with that. Now, ours is not exactly working right, is it? I think I have an idea why. And this stems back to when I first 
started working when we did our first power up and that is the output of my test pattern generator is on max high output max level I'm slamming this out with a really strong signal because I was hoping to get something out of it now that it's starting to come to life we can back that way off so I just put in a much lower signal okay there's a little lump now also the set in addition to the automatic gain control has a contrast control which manually sets the gain I have that on max let's lower that off a bit if I go all the way down like I just did we have nothing the gain has gone down too much we put it about in the middle it's definitely having a big impact on the amplitude of that waveform so let us observe the screen while we adjust as I'm rotating that contrast control let's observe the screen while I play around with these settings and see now if we can get it to lock I put my video generator back to max output and the set back to max contrast so now we're back to this where it's has a visible vertical sync interval one let's back off the RF generator I'll put it at about half output level and let's decrease the contrast which I think is the center shaft this is contrast and brightness on the same control shaft and that definitely had an effect if I go all the way down we have it disappears because I've, I've cut the gain too much so this does have automatic gain control, but it also has a manual gain control, courtesy of the contrast control. So you said the first sweet spot. Uh, depending on where I set it, this is, this is too much gain. Back it off. And it snaps in. A little rolling a little bit, but now we tweak the hold control. There we go. The blanking interval is off the screen. Now, so you have a little bit of flagging on here. That's what I was talking about with that horizontal oscillator. It's taken a little bit for it to sync up when it uh, comes out of the blanking interval. If you tweak the hold control, eh, it doesn't quite fix it. That gets back to that coil on the back of the set. There's that, and there should be another adjustable coil in here. And you set them such in a certain procedure that should eliminate or certainly minimize that flagging they call that or when it's bending at the top of the screen you could probably get it a little better just by tweaking that coil just eyeballing it not the prescribed procedure but so I'm going clockwise notice it's just having a it's messing up the top of the screen go back the other way Kind of, out, kind of make the, the very top of these squares kind of wave back and forth. That's the impact of tweaking that horizontal frequency. What I'm doing is I'm putting the free running oscillator frequency. I'm, I'm changing it such that it, it takes a little while for the AFC automatic frequency control circuit to lock on the incoming signal. Now I've gone too far. Sort of like a phase lock loop. I, I've gone so far that the corrective circuit can't compensate for the free running frequency being so far off and then I get back on and it snaps Went too far the other way all right we'll talk more about that when we get to the horizontal but there we go doing a little bit of recap on the vertical circuit rebuilding the vertical integrator and we have a more or less stable vertical image we still don't have enough height though Still don't have enough height. Now I think that's because the boost voltage is too low. I'm hoping that's what the problem is. So next time we're going to pick up with working on the horizontal circuit because that's what generates the boost circuit which affects the height of the vertical circuit. Isn't this fun? Alright, thanks for watching.